Today's scripture comes from John 6, 60 to 70. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then wait to see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before. The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing, the words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus had known from the beginning which one of them would believe and which one would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, I have not chosen you, the twelve, yet one of you is a devil. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, we'd like to invite all the kiddos down here on the steps to have Children's Moment with Deb Plumley. I need to get my preschool check in. You guys doing great? Eh, somewhere in the middle. Ugh, I need to go back to bed. All right, great answers. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited about this week because for a lot of our friends, school's back. Some of you are brand new to school and some of you have done it for a while, right? But sometimes that can be a lot of different feelings. You could be really happy about it. You could be nervous. Maybe you're mad or bummed about going back to school. But no matter how you're feeling, it's a good thing to try some new things and have a chance to make some new choices, right? Sammy is choosing daddy. But at school, you have lots of choices, right? Sometimes they're small choices, like what am I going to have for lunch today? Sometimes the choices could be, hmm, who am I going to play with on the playground? What am I going to wear for school? But sometimes the choices are a little bit more important, right? Like, am I going to follow the rules today? Those rules are there. They're important. But I guess it's a choice if you're going to listen or not. Sometimes you have choices about who your friends are going to be. Are you going to choose people who are listening, who are kind, who are helpful? Or maybe you're going to choose to be with some friends who... Make it a little harder to do what you should as you lay on the floor. There are lots of different choices you can make at school, but there was something similar that happened with Jesus and his disciples. We've already heard the story about Jesus feeding the 5,000, and he had a little talk with those people who followed him later, and they wanted to follow him because they wanted more food, right? They weren't really there to listen to him. They really wanted to be there, boop, to get fed. And they didn't really know that they were trying, Jesus was trying to teach them a lesson, right? They just wanted food. They wanted something easy to listen to. And when he was trying to tell them a big, important thing, they chose it wasn't for them. And a lot of them chose to leave. And Jesus saw that some of them stayed. Twelve of his disciples stayed with him. And he asked them, are you going to leave too? Are you going to choose to go? And Peter, one of his disciples, said, no, we're going to stay with you. Because we know you're the Holy One. We know that you are the one who brings life. We know you're the one to follow. We choose to stay with you. Jesus had some words about some of the people who might not be making the right choice. 
he had some words about the people who did choose to stay. And I'm going to talk about more of that with Children's Church. But for us right now, I want us to do a little prayer. So close your eyes. You can just listen today. Dear Jesus, I choose to follow you. I choose to be your disciple. Guide our choices every day so we can do what you want us to do. Amen. If you're coming to Children's Church, go meet me at the back door and stand there. If you're going to nursery or back to families, let's go find them. Choir, that was fantastic. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Okay, something you hear routinely um, is, is this language, language like this. I finally came to God. You heard that before? I finally came to God. And then somebody will say, God woke me up. He came to me. He chose me or Something along those lines. Have you heard those stories? People in their lives change. They say something like, I chose God or God chose me. And sometimes they get into kind of arguments about it. I love when I get to be in a room and no one knows I'm a preacher and they have these arguments. The barbershop is a great place for this. (laughs) Did God choose me or did I choose God? It's kind of a question a lot of us Asked sometimes, or a question we hear people asking. And there's something interesting in this text that says that. It says these people decided not to choose Christ. And Jesus went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. It seems like Jesus is saying, you can go to God all you want, but until God initiates the act, you're not going to make it. Is that problematic? Is that problematic to you that you mean I can choose God and God cannot choose me? Someone please tell me there's a problem with this thinking. (laughs) It came out of the mouth of Jesus. It's in red letters in John chapter 6. You mean God chooses who can choose Him? It's biblical. Access to Jesus is impossible without God's initiating act. You can't come to God without God initiating you coming to Him. So when I see people wearing the t-shirt that says chosen on it, have you seen those t-shirts? I'm chosen, what are you saying? You're saying that God chose you and that you chose God, I assume? That it was both ways? Now, are you saying there are people who aren't chosen? Mm. It's a conundrum. I have a slide for you. Joel 2, I think it's verse 28. I will pour out my spirit on all people. On who? Good. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Okay, this came to fruition after Jesus died and ascended into heaven. Acts chapter 1, we don't have a slide for that one, but it's Pentecost. Actually, it's Acts chapter 2. Is that right, Cindy? Yeah, anyways. Pentecost came. 
It's when the Holy Spirit came and anointed those gathered in the room post-Jesus. And then guess what it says? Every time that Paul or Peter or John or Philip or so-and-so or so-and-so went and started a church somewhere, guess what came upon that church? The Spirit. The Spirit is God's way of choosing. So the Holy Spirit marks those that are chosen, perhaps. That's what the early church thought. The Holy Spirit marks those who are chosen by God. So you can wear that t-shirt with pride, chosen, if you believe you have been blessed with the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean for those of us who have never had a moment of the Holy Spirit? What does that mean for those of us who are like, Holy Spirit, man, I just started using that word like three months ago. Are we out of luck? Did God choose not to choose us? Are we less than? Are we not part of God's grand plan? What's the deal here? Let me say, I believe there's hope for the Holy Spirit to move and act in your life. The Apostle Paul gave it to people. Jesus Christ gave it to people. Peter gave it to people. The Holy Spirit isn't a one-time thing. It's not just... Perhaps it's not just for the chosen. The Holy Spirit is something you can have. And there's this weird paradox between being chosen and choosing yourself. They kind of happen simultaneously sometimes. That as you choose God, God's been sitting there going, finally, I've been waiting, I've, I've just been waiting on this day. But you have to know this. Being enabled, that's the, that's the language Jesus used. They can't come to me unless the Father enables them. Being enabled is no substitute for your decision. Does that make sense? Being enabled by God is no substitute for your decision to choose God. Are you following me? This text was messing with my brain all week, and I think the Spirit finally revealed something to it. At the end of this text, Jesus says, I chose you twelve, and yet one of you is a devil. What does that mean? It means that Jesus chose these 12. The Son of God came to earth and chose 12 people and said, I want you to follow me. You are my 12. You are mine. And guess what one of them did? He didn't choose them back. So don't think that this enabling that the Father does, while it, I mean, I don't want to belittle it at all. It is is a necessary part. You can't come to Christ without that enabling But you still have to choose every single day. You have to choose Christ. If not, if you decide not to choose Christ, you're in danger of being what Jesus called a devil. This text, these 10 verses in chapter 6, 60 through 70, are filled with choices. Deb, uh, she's gone. Deb did an awesome job with the children too. Choices, 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 okay? These disciples, I'm going to use the word disciples because it refers to the disciples not as the 12, but as the many. Okay, the disciples of Jesus, all the big crowd that was following Jesus, that crowd of disciples had a choice whether to follow Jesus or not. Okay, the 12 had the decision. That's, that's Peter, that's John, that's Bartholomew, that's Nathan. You follow me? These are the 12 disciples, okay? They had the opportunity to choose Christ or not choose Christ. Jesus had the opportunity to choose the 12 or and or to choose those disciples, that crowd of disciples. And God had the choice to choose these people. There's choices all over the place in this text 
And let me just say again that your choice matters just as much as anybody else's. Your choice matters. It is not substituted for being enabled. Judas, though, was chosen as well. Can you hear that? Jesus Christ Himself chose Judas Iscariot. And the reason Judas is known as evil is because he didn't choose Christ back. And if you have the the thought in your head, but doesn't it say that God chose Judas to be evil? Well, perhaps. But if you believe in free will, then you believe that Judas had the choice and he chose the opposite of Christ. And that guilt of his decision, the guilt of what he chose, drove him into a field with 30 things of silver to hang himself. Judas chose. He could have chose Christ, could have chose evil. He chose evil. And so I ask you, church, today, what do you choose? God has chosen very plainly what He has chosen, but I ask the church, will you choose Him back? Of course, Pastor. Of course we're going to choose Jesus. Of course we're not going to choose the route of Judas. Of course. Well, that's what they all said too. Those disciples who ran away. That group of followers of Jesus who said, you know what? This is difficult. We're good. Actually, you're not the guy we thought you were. And they left and they ran off. And do you know what caused them to run off? This line right here. You have no life within you unless you partake in my life, said Jesus. You have no life within you unless you partake in my life. Jesus said it a little differently. He said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they went, we're not vampires or zombies. We're good. You have no life within you unless you partake in my life. Let me say, church, I don't think we have the same choice as Judas or Peter Or those disciples. It's similar but not exactly the same. What I see, what I diagnose as something the church as a whole globally has done is they've chosen the resurrection. They've chosen that ticket to heaven like, yeah, I believe in Jesus, you better believe it. But something they didn't choose was the life of Jesus. They chose the resurrection, but not the life. And you know the line that Jesus says. He says, I am the resurrection and the... I think we're really good at choosing the resurrection. But we kind of say the same thing they said when it comes to His life. Did you remember what they said? This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Jesus... like. What are you talking about? And so I ask you, church, you have heard that it was said, do not murder anyone who murders will be subject to judgment, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother, says Jesus, even those who are angry with his brother will be subject to judgment again. So do not be angry. Go and be reconciled to your brother in Christ. This is a hard teaching. What do you choose, church? You have heard it said that do not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who even looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So cut out your eye, cut off your right hand, says Christ. This is a hard teaching. Will you follow it? Will you choose it, church? It has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness or adultery, causes her to become an adulteress himself. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. In other words, don't get divorced. This is a hard 
teaching. Who can accept it? Will you choose it, church? Quit making promises. Does your word not stand as a promise? You have heard it said that it is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him and say, you missed this side too. Here. This is a hard teaching. Will you choose it, church? We choose the resurrection. We love to choose heaven. But what Jesus was trying to tell us is heaven can be right here if you live this extraordinary life. What Jesus calls you to is not just resurrection. He calls you to life here today. There's a way to live. It is, it is hard. It is difficult. And for those of you sitting there today going, well, I already failed. I looked at a woman lustfully on my way to church. I divorced my wife 40 years ago, and I was mad at my brother yesterday. The good news is there's grace, right? The good news is grace is abundant. Grace is the main, the main that's the heart of Christianity. That's the heart of Christ is grace. With the hope that obedience is following Jesus forgives you with the hope that you're going to strive after obedience after that. Because Jesus is not just the resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection and the... The good news is, is we don't have to have it all figured out right now, okay? Jesus isn't asking for you to live a perfect life. He knows we can't. We don't have to have it all figured out. And you know why I know that is because the only guy who chose Jesus in this text was Peter. And you know Peter fumbled his way through discipleship like nobody else. Peter messed up left and right, said the wrong answers all the time. But the one thing he never did was he never... Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? Three times, Bob said. Not just once, but three times. Jesus looked at the twelve because they had a choice to make as well. Jesus chose them, now they get to choose too. He looked at them and said, now are you going to leave too? After all these followers ran away, these crowds came running to Jesus because of the miracles he was doing. And then at the hard teachings, they ran away. He looks at the 12 that he chose himself, that he handpicked and said, are you going to run away too? And guess what Peter said? I choose you. And you know why Peter chose Christ is because he knew Christ. Peter didn't understand the teaching any more than anybody else there did. Peter doesn't get everything Jesus is about, everything Jesus is saying, but one thing Peter does know is the heart of Jesus Christ. And so I'm not asking you, and Christ is not asking you, to figure all this out. What he's asking is that you know him. Get to know Jesus just a little bit. Get to know Jesus. And this life comes a whole lot easier, this life that he asks you to live. We go to the next slide real quick. Next one, sorry. Two more forward. There we are. Everyone's heard this. Every preacher uses it. It's a little overused in my opinion. But Jesus, you've heard it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the what? Of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never, what? Away from me, you evildoers. Knowing Jesus is a choice. 
God has put forth the effort to show you that he's chosen you. You and I get the great opportunity on a daily basis to say, I choose him too. I warn you that if you're only concerned about the resurrection and your ticket to heaven, you're not going to choose Christ. You're going to choose the ticket. And Christ is so much more than that. So be careful. If you're not choosing Christ, you're choosing something. It wasn't Judas's intention to kill the Son of God. But he didn't choose Christ. Amen.